Now to what's tipping the scales, the state has rested in the bathtub murder trial, and now it's the defense's turn to present evidence if they so choose, meaning the case against David Tronas could go to the jury today, and we could be on a verdict watch this evening. So has the state done enough to prove its case? The only reasonable explanation for Shanti's death is sitting right there. Pajama pants represented as being from David Tronis. Yes, um, on the, this exhibit, um, the two stains that I took forward gave chemical indications of the presence of blood. The cause of her death is a, a combination of the strangulation and the blunt head trauma. In this case, the manner of death is homicide. You have fake cried over this woman's death since we made contact with you for hours. Not one tear came out of your eyes, not one. All right, here to talk about it in the studio with me, Court TV's Kelly Kraft. She's been a prosecutor. She's one of our legal correspondents and our legal analyst today. He's back by popular demand, Mr. John Phillips, on the program, joining us from Florida. So, uh, Kelly, let me start with you, please, tapping into your experience as a prosecutor has the state met its burden in your opinion? I think so, Julie. I mean, these injuries, it's just hard to get over these injuries. You can't even explain it away by this was a slip and fall in the bathtub. We have the strangulation and the blunt force trauma to the head, which somebody could say, okay, that's because of the fall in the bathtub. But how do you explain the strangulation? I just think the injuries are going to be too hard if the defense does decide to put on a case to overcome. I think the state has met its burden. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know, the hyoid bone in the neck, you're right, Kelly, the injuries tell the story. Her body at autopsy told the story. The hyoid bone doesn't get broken from a slip and fall. It gets broken from manual strangulation, choking. Uh, I've got a clip where Detective Teresa Sprague is talking about how after Shanti Cooper was dead, somebody stole her ring from her lifeless finger. During that search, was there any jewelry recovered? Yes. And what was recovered? What we'd been looking for for 127 days, her diamond ring. All right, and where was it located in? In a ring box, in a suitcase, in Mr. Tronis' bedroom at his mother's house. He stole her ring. How despicable is that? John Phillips, will you weigh in for us, please? Yesterday was a big day for the state. You know, they, they had their main investigator speak. And, 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 and like you said, they went through the biomechanics of death, not, not the slip and fall theory. And then they went in through, you know, all of the motive, all of the absurdity with, with Mr. Tronis. It was a good day for the state of Florida. Yeah, it sure was, John. You're right. I, I am with you both. I think they are on their way to victory. They've met their burden of proof. Uh, this guy is somebody that I think is extremely dangerous. And, and you both know what it's like, John and Kelly, to be in criminal court. Most of the people are good people who just make mistakes. And then you have those really serious cases with really dangerous people. Uh, this is one of those cases. This is a homicide case uh, with somebody who I think, you know, may kill again uh, if he did what the state of Florida says he did. And I believe the state of Florida. Uh, so what can his defense team do to counteract all of this terrible evidence that the state has brought in against him. Uh, Kelly, what do you think, if anything, the defense can do here? Well, I think the first thing we're going to see this morning, calling for a directed verdict judgment of acquittal this morning, probably from defense counsel. Now, if defense counsel does decide to stand up, remember we talked about it yesterday, reserved the opening statement. So then if he gets up, gives an opening statement, is able to kind of give an overview of how the case is going to go, talk about what the jurors heard, discredit that and then talk about also what the jurors didn't hear mm -hmm. what didn't the state prove here according to defense counsel so we'll have to see but again i just think those injuries are going to be so hard to get around from a defense counsel's point of view mm -hmm. right kelly unless they bring in some other magical medical expert witness which i you know i doubt they're going to find a pathologist who's going to disagree with the assessment that the one uh, who examined her body uh, put forth. John Phillips, tell us anything in your mind you think this defense team can or should do. Damage control. You know, I, I know from part of it there, that he's had this cracker theory that they only fed him crackers and they they kept him for too long. You know, now now you try the investigation and I, it, it's going to be a tough uphill battle, but you know you can pick some points and try to try to make it look like they had this in mind the entire time. The problem is they had this in this case 
in their mind the entire time because that appears to be exactly how she was murdered. Mm -hmm. All right, John. And Kelly and I talked about this earlier this week about how the defense did try to file uh, for leave to do a not guilty by reason of insanity plea here, uh, but they were late in their filing. So I wonder if that's going to come up today. What do you think, Kelly? I don't know if it will come up today, Julie, but what's really interesting about that is if defense counsel wanted to do that, will we see later maybe... Um, the defendant here if he is found guilty saying ineffective assistance of counsel because he missed that filing yes. deadline and one of the things that I was also watching for in this case to watch how the defendant acted because then maybe I was thinking maybe they could get some more uh, yes he is not competent to stand trial even though he was found competent to stand trial but maybe more on that we really wanted to put forth this not guilty by reason of insanity and the way he was acting in trial we can tell that he isn't right now now I want to make sure I'm clear on this there is a distinction between being competent to stand trial and not guilty by reason of insanity right. but if we're talking about an appeal later on if he is found guilty maybe you could have used some things in court if he was acting a certain way but he wasn't right yeah, I think he's off to prison for the rest of his life. That's me. Uh, we're about to see what's going to happen in court in just a short time. Kelly Kraft, thank you kindly. John Phillips, we're taking you with us, my friends. We head into Court TV Live. We're going to Florida for that motion for judgment of acquittal. And we're going to be going to Alabama for Yaron Vandersloot's plea. Don't go away.